So, as we have made it through week 14 of the NFL season, it has been very interesting to see where we go from here. And, well, we know a couple of teams have been eliminated from playoff contention already. And there are a couple more that get added today. So, congrats, Texans. Congrats, Falcons. You are eliminated from playoff contention with terrible losses just absolutely terrible for both of these teams but let's start on thursday of course you know we had thursday night football as we always do and speaking of thursday night football it's looking like nobody's going to grab it in the next round of nfl tv negotiations and whatnot unless it's like amazon or something like that nobody really wants thursday night football because it doesn't really add anything so now you know all the networks are like hey we're just gonna aggressively, you know, focus on Sundays and stuff like that and the Monday night games and stuff like that, you know? So, Thursday night football, maybe it will be gone by 2022. Maybe. I mean, come on. But the Rams-Patriots Super Bowl rematch from a couple of years back, you know, and Cam Akers just absolutely dominated this game. I mean, Patriots just couldn't get anything going. They were getting dominated on defense. I mean, Cam Newton had to come out of the game, and Jared Stidham had to come in the game. And, I mean, it was just great. It was just great for Cam Akers, though. He ran for 171 yards in this game. and I mean, he was just dominant all over the Patriots' defense. The Rams pretty much blew him out, 24-3. Titans, Jags, well, it was the Derrick Henry show again. I mean, what can you say? Derrick Henry... At the Jags, it's it's like beating up, you know. It, it, it's just like you know picking on your little brother. Like it's just that bad. It's always been that bad for the Jags. Like every time the Titans take on the Jags, Derrick Henry just completely abuses them, and he ran for two hundred fifteen yards again. He ran for two hundred plus yards again and two touchdowns against the Jags. Just come on, come on. But Jags are trash. There's no reason to talk about it. Uh, Bucks, Vikings. Now, the Vikings were in the seventh position before, but now they are probably not. Bucks, you know, they get the W. If it wasn't for Dan Bailey missing four kicks, including an extra point, and three field goals, I think the Vikings would have had more of a chance. But, I mean... You know, the Bucks did what they needed to do in this game, which was, you know, come back from a big loss, and they won the game. Very simple. Now, the big game of this noon slot on Sunday was the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins, they had Patrick Mahomes' number early, picking him off a couple times. But uh, this is the Chiefs. You can't just... You can't just beat the Chiefs like that. The Chiefs can only beat themselves. They can only beat themselves. And the Chiefs just rattled off touchdown and touchdown, you know, getting plays on defense as well. You know, with Sorensen and Matthew, you know, making plays on defense, you know, along with the rest of the defensive line and stuff like that, you know. And the Chiefs were basically blowing out the Dolphins by the time the third quarter had started. And the Dolphins only had, you know, they, they came back a little bit, made it close, but it it didn't matter at the end. It, the hole was just too big of a climb, and, and, the Chief, and the Chiefs beat the Dolphins by six points. So what about the Broncos and the Panthers? Now, that game ended up being very interesting because Drew Locke was connected to K.J. Hambler for pretty much the entire game. I mean, he was beating the Panthers deep and stuff like that. I was very surprised. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's going on here? What is going on here? And the Broncos beat the Panthers. Very, very surprising result right there. I mean, it was 2-4 and what, 4-8 and eight teams, 4-9, you know. That'd be a pretty good game. Pretty good game. So, again, the Texans are eliminated from the playoffs. They are... They are pretty much out of it. You know, Bears just finally decided to wake up after six straight losses. The defense was playing great. The offense did enough. 
You know, they just blew out the Texans like it was nobody's business. And the Texans, it, it's been a long year, man. It's been a long year. Hopefully they can find somebody that can run the team a lot better. Because, I mean, this, this was just pathetic. They only scored seven points. So Daniel Jones did indeed come back to the Giants this week. And the Cardinals basically blew out the Giants. I mean, once Daniel Jones turned it over that first time... You knew it was over. You knew it was over. And the cards easily take care of business. Beat beat the Giants. You know, very fun. Very fun for my Dallas Cowboys. Who, by the way, you know, in Andy Dalton's return to Cincinnati, just blew out the Bengals. I mean, the Bengals fumbled three straight times to open up the game. One of them getting taken back by Alton Smith for a touchdown. Three straight fumbles, and you know that's a recipe for the disaster right there. You know, Cowboys took care of business, easy took care of business, but it ended up not mattering because of later results in the day. Um, you know, the, the the Cowboys, you know, they were in a prime position to maybe get back into second place or something like that, you know, keep pace, but now things have gotten a little bit crazier. So as we move on here to all these 3 o'clock games, there were a bunch of them today, or rather the other day. And let's start with the um, the rest of the NFC East first, Saints, Eagles. Now, the Eagles started Jalen Hurts. And I was kind of chastising and laughing this week, but, the, but apparently I was proven wrong. Very wrong. And the Saints... You know, they just couldn't get anything going. I've, I've been wondering, when was Drew Brees going to come back for the Saints, their their win streak? You know, the Saints have been winning game after game for the last, like, what, nine or ten weeks. And the Eagles put the clamps on them. They played good defense for the first time in a long time. Jalen Hurts ran for 100 yards. Miles Sanders ran for 100 yards. Crazy stuff. And the Eagles, then they because of their win, have put my Cowboys back in last place in the NFC East. And you know who's in first? The football team. The football team. They are in sole possession of first place with only a couple weeks to go. And they, you know, they just had their way with the 49ers. I mean, Nick Mullins is not good. I mean, if, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo's not, you know, he hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been well all season long. So Nick Mullins has had to start a lot of games. Nick Mullins turns it over so much. Like, I don't, I don't understand how this man has a job as a quarterback in the NFL. Because he turns the ball over every five seconds. He's like Nathan Peterman out there. Just terrible. And in Washington, you know, Chase Young took, what, a fumble? Yeah, I think it was a fumble back for a touchdown. I mean... You know, the Washington didn't even score an offensive touchdown, I don't think. They didn't even score an offensive touchdown. I mean, Alex Smith got injured, and Dwayne Haskins had to end the game. Dwayne Haskins. You know, we were all touting. It was the worst rookie quarterback, you know, since Ryan Leaf out here. And, and I mean, the football team, 6-7, first place in the NFC East. They are looking like they could lock it up very soon. The defense is improving. Everything is going well. And things are just looking hella fun for this team. But there's a there's only a couple weeks left, so Washington has to get it together all the way. And the Jets, the Jets are closer to completing, you know, the perfect the perfect season. Forty to three. Seahawks demolish the Jets. Now, the Jets kicker also missed three kicks. Two of them were in the exact same spot. The exact same spot on the right hash, I think. Yeah, it was the right hash. Right hash, 46 yards out. Two straight misses. Disgusting. The Jets are just, this might be the best 0-16 team of all time. Honestly, the best 0-16 team of all time. Like the, the like the Lions are comical and, and 
you know, the Lions were comically bad, and the Browns, they got some, they got some games that were close and stuff like that. But the Jets, if they go 0-16, might be the best 0-16 team of all time, honestly. But meanwhile, what about the Raiders? What about, what about the Raiders and the Colts? Well, it didn't go the Raiders' way. They got blown, they got pretty much blown out by the Colts, which is very surprising. But then again, not so much because, I mean, the Raiders have been playing kind of sloppy the last few weeks. Run defense was definitely not there if you know Jonathan Taylor was going to run over, over you right, ugh, run all over you like that. 161 total yards for him. Just crazy. You know, the Colts were doing whatever they could on defense, doing whatever they could on offense. You know, T.Y. Hilton caught a couple touchdowns as well. I mean, everything was just clicking for the Colts today. And the Raiders, they have to get it together. You know, they have lost a lot of momentum quickly. And I don't know where in the world, you know, they have to get something. They have to get it all together completely in the next few weeks. There's only three weeks left of the season now. They have to get it together completely. Packers line's not really going to talk too long on this. You know, Packers pretty much take care of business. The Lions had, they they were right there with the Packers. And of course, you know, the Packers ran away from the Lions like they should. Social distancing, you know, basically two touchdown lead was pr pretty much sealed the deal for the Packers. Yeah, they only won by seven, but I mean, they had a two touchdown lead in the fourth quarter. Pretty much sealed the deal. Lions defense is bad. Lions are bad. It's just rough to watch the Lions, man. So, yeah, the Chargers did, in fact, eliminate the Falcons for the playoffs. But, you know, both these teams are chokers. They tr they both tried to lose this game. Both of them. They both tried to lose this game on multiple occasions. But ultimately, the Chargers did get it. Did indeed get the victory. They, they got it. Falcons are out of the playoffs now. So, you know. And the Steelers, they need some work done. Yeah, I mean, drops by um, Deontay Johnson, you know, just he's, he dropped it twice to open the game. And the Bills started clicking early and often. I mean, Josh Allen to Stephon Diggs was just a beauty to watch. You know, he was throwing it. There was like three consecutive throws where – you know, the Steelers just couldn't cover him. They could not cover him. The Bills are flying on all cylinders now. They could clinch the ASC East soon, you know. They are now 10-3. and three. Very fun team to watch with Josh Allen coming into his own. I'm loving every second of it, and I am loving every second. Just good stuff right there for the Bills. And the Ravens, they are back in in the playoff picture. I thought they were, you know, I, I honestly thought, you know, that things were, you know, looking dire for the Ravens a couple weeks ago. But they've easily bounced back, you know, with with a couple of big victories, you know, especially this one against the Browns, which I have as the thumbnail with Lamar Jackson. Unfortunately, I didn't get Lamar Jackson running with cramps. Cramps. All this man had to do was go to the bathroom, and boom, there you go. L leads the Ravens to a comeback. Justin Tucker, you know, of course, would kick a game-winning field goal, and then there would be a safety after that. 47-42 was the final there. I mean, don't get me wrong. Baker Mayfield went off in this game. Brown's defense looked atrocious. Could not stop Lamar Jackson before his injury, his injury, and it couldn't stop him after. So, I mean, both these teams are just interesting to watch. It was a very good game. I was not feeling well yesterday, so I didn't watch the whole game. I did watch a couple highlights, but, man. So, yeah, there it is. There's week 14 in a nutshell. We finished it up, and I cannot wait for this week. It is going to be one hell of a week once again because we have, you know, a lot of good matchups this week that could decide the fates for these playoff contenders. So, 
y'all like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, click the notification bell, and I'll see you all in the next video. Y'all take care.